Hello and welcome to Release Date Rewind. My name is Mark J. Parker and I am a film lover, filmmaker, film celebrator. And normally this is an audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on your favorite apps. But thanks to Portland Media Center, you are about to watch the video component of this show where I celebrate movie anniversaries with my friends. Each month, I usually talk about two different movies that I love with different friends, and we talk about the making of the movies, trivia, any fun memories associated with them. So I hope you enjoy, because now it's time to rewind. All right, everybody, I'm so happy that my friend from the podcast that I love Back to the Blockbuster. My friend Gaius Bowling is on the show with me today to talk about some spooky stuff. Hello, Gaius. Happy almost oh, Halloween. Yes, almost Halloween. The best time of the year. Yes. We love spooky season. We love spooky we love season. Spooky. <laughs> Gaius and I were just chatting for a few minutes before we even hit record about all the good stuff out right now. We just just to recap real quick, we were talking about Halloween ends. We we're talking about smile. It sounds like Gaius, you liked smile. I did. I did like it. Yeah. Yeah. I, did I you actually, like? I liked it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So that I can't wait to see. Did you like Barbarian? I did see that one. What'd you think of that? I I did love it, and you know what? I love that I went in kind of blind. Like yeah. I I think I saw one I, I saw one trailer for it, and that didn't uh -huh. really tell me enough. Yeah. And then someone someone um because I just started writing for uh CBR, and they were like, hey, like don't like watch anything else. Like if you don't watch anything else from it, don't watch another TV spot. Just like he saw it yeah. before me, and he was just like. Just go in completely go blind, in blind and you're gonna love yeah. it and yeah. i like i saw it with my brother and we were over like mouths on the floor like what the hell are we watching this is it was like so yeah. cool and so like like but i had no idea it was gonna go it the felt way it like was going at all. i totally agree i love the first act which is what was heavily shown in the trailer which i agree i only saw it once and then right. i was like but that's been me lately because trailers especially with these halloween movies i feel like gave away so much that i'm like i'm only gonna watch the trailer once I think for Scream 5, which Gaius and I talked about on his show almost a whole year ago, I might have seen that trailer twice just because obviously I'm such a Scream nerd that I'm like, okay, well, I can't yeah. hold it. I have to go back again. But I try <laughs> to only really watch the, the trailers once because, yeah, I just feel like why, why, why ruin anything for yourself? Just go in as blind as possible, you know? And you even like you Hellraiser, too much. Like, I didn't want to like really see too much of the trailer. I'm like, let me just see how this goes. Did you watch Hellraiser on Hulu? I did, I did, I did watch it. You know what's funny is that like I posted that trailer on G Reels, but it was one of those things where it was like an auto post. I didn't even like watch it. That was like oh. something that was like I planned ahead, and and like so I didn't even, even though I was excited to see the movie, I didn't watch the trailer before I huh? actually watched the movie, and actually it actually helped a lot. I think. Um, yeah. I told a friend I was like I was like hey this is like I was like this is the best one since like the first one, and my friend loves and hates those movies. Like he loves the first two, and then like okay. he's like the rest is like. He's yeah. like, the rest is like a hot, me a hot mess. But he was like, is that really saying a lot? Because like the sequels aren't that good. I'm like, I know. All right. All right. All right. I know that's faint praise. But like it, it is still the better, the best one we've had in like, yeah, oh, really, really long time. It was, really long time. it was a good movie. And I don't love that franchise. There are very few like slasher franchise franchises I don't love. And Hellraiser, I've never loved. It's a little too gory for me. It's just, ugh. and yeah, I thought it was good. I was, it was still pretty gross, but I, yeah. I haven't seen the first two films in a long, long time, but Hellraiser might honestly have like the most movies in a franchise because there are so many like direct to video sequels -to -video and some ones, yeah. don't even star uh, Doug Bradley as Pinhead. There's someone else. I'm like, I truly can't keep up with that franchise. What's right? crazy is that uh, Scott Erickson, who directed like Sinister and like Doctor Strange, mm -hmm. like he directed he directed Inferno. That was like his first like oh, really? uh Hellraiser Inferno was his first movie and I was like oh, funny. good for you I was, I was like good for you he's like how you got out of that and yeah. like but if you but honestly if you if you go back and watch Inferno and then mm. watch something like Sinister yeah. he was like honing some of his like whatever creative stuff he had on oh, that cool. and then he like and then he uses it in like stuff like Sinister and I and uh Black Phone as well which I also love uh yes I another, thought good, Black horror, Phone was another great. good horror another good horror movie from like the summer like yeah. I so I saw I saw the Black Phone last year at beyond fest oh, and we were like so excited to talk about it i was like ah oh, i just can't wait to talk about it yeah. and this is when it was going to come out in like january of this year right. and Kept then we got a, and then we got an email we got an email they're like push it to 
June. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. I think it benef- I I think I think it benefited them in the end, though. I mean, it played pretty well during the summer. Yeah. And like we were saying before we started recording, like this is like a good time to be like a horror movie fan. Totally. I think, like we have some good it's, it's stuff getting- out. And not even theatrical. Like I this weekend, I just watched um, Piggy, this new Spanish horror comedy, which was great. I don't know. I've heard I've heard good things about. It. Check it out. It's it's yeah, really awesome. it's really interesting. But yeah, we have lots of good stuff. I feel like there's more that I have to watch. And of course, with shows, we have Dahmer and now The Watcher. And oh my god, I can't keep up. Yeah, but yeah. It's uh, a spooky season is here. Gaius and I are loving it. So before we get into Candyman, which I can't believe this is thirty years of this iconic slasher this other hook man it's hook month everyone uh, it's just hook so month. you know this <laughs> is on my show to talk about candy man and i will be talking about i know what you did last summer later this month on my show but before that i'm going to be on gaius's podcast talking about that gem of a movie that i love 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 so it's hook month everyone but before we get into that tell me gaius tell me what's going on in your world i know you're in california uh you write for a few different sites tell us like all the cool things that you do because it's always so impressive uh yeah i feel like it was funny too like when i got this new job with like cbr like my friend messaged me and he was like uh, don't you feel like you're already like doing enough <laughs> like why are you adding more to your plate right um but if but if you if you're loving what you're doing then it doesn't really oh totally really matter. You'll, you'll make time for it right yeah well zip joe blow for like three years and i was grateful to like i got a lot of good opportunities through them and like i mm-hmm. was grateful for it but like they were wanted me to write different things that I wasn't like they wanted me to do more like pop culture stuff because it was like it gets a lot of hits so like yeah. all of a sudden I was all of a sudden I was writing about like Johnny Depp and Amber Heard and I was like I don't want to write about this right um, yeah so I, was, so I was like all right if I have to do this then I need to find somewhere else I can do what I really want to do if I want to like I need to balance it out the cool thing about CBR is that like they reached out to me and like I'm covering like the things that like I used to love covering like I love just talking about like movies and TV and yeah. not just you know not how many times did Ezra Miller get arrested or something like that right. you know like it gets like yeah. it gets like it, it becomes less fun so like the cool thing about them is that like there's so many writers on that site I'm not I'm not tied down to a certain schedule with them I can log in and write as I please they mm. already have like they they picked like the stories from like the day like any industry story they put them all on this like message board and we kind of just go in and like Hey, I want that one. I want that one. Just grab oh, cool. whatever you want. Yeah. It's really, it's a really cool, like cohesive, like, even though there's so many people, um, Are there? everyone's just really nice and, and, and very like, you know, helpful, like helping you kind of learn how to write in their style and like do all that stuff. It's like, it's cool. Yeah. That's I'm cool. having a good time doing That's it. That's great. Oh, it's, I love it, to it's hear it. making me love doing this again. Yeah. Making me love yeah. doing it again. And like, so it's like, you know, if I have to, I was like, I have to balance these things out if I like, feel like I'm like, all right, I'm not too happy doing this kind of thing. So it's like, I get to do a little bit more of that with these yeah, guys. And that's good. it's actually helped me help me build up the, the G roll stuff more too. And like, they're very supportive of me having like, like my own thing. And like, you're like cool. hey, like you, you, we love your Instagram stuff. Like we love like podcasting. Like we, we encourage you to be like a yeah. nerd. This is what we want. We want like people who are fans of this stuff. And like, totally. he's like, whatever, whatever like pushes your creativity, like that's what they kind of want and that's a really good thing to have if you absolutely want to be a oh like, yeah the, the more stuff you do on the side like podcasting like he uh, gaius has a great instagram uh, tons of movie news which you're one of my few people now i just go to i'm like oh cool i don't even have to look at the real <laughs> articles i just look at gaius's awesome <laughs> post he's got a great following g reels on instagram but yeah the more you do that kind of stuff the more likely that people will go to the site to read your articles to read other articles so yeah it makes total yeah. sense so tell tell me real quick about um I, I was a guest on your podcast thank you very much and i'm going to be on like i said very soon so how long have you been doing the podcast now it's been has it been a year or more than a year so our first um i actually looked on apple Podcasts. our first episode was posted on november 10th of last year wow so it's, so it's, it's, cra- it's it's crazy it's almost been a year and like it it was one of those things that was like I got approached because of G Reels. Uh, they were like, "Hey, like, cool. we want you to do a podcast, but like, you can do whatever you want." There was no like basis of like they knew it'd be movie related, but they were like, yeah. "You can just you build the you build the show. How many how many people you want to have on? Like, it's all you, and we'll wow. like we'll they they take care of like the editing and all that stuff." So I always feel bad because like I feel like I'm, I mean, 
it, you're putting in the work doing like the research and stuff on things yeah. but like, i do feel bad that I, like other people are like editing it. i mean i do get like final <sighs> cut on stuff but like yeah. but I, I know that you you know like it's oh my god like, one the of the editing is the worst one of the things part that was so, <laughs> yeah yeah one of the things like when i was like discussing it with like my buddy owen about doing it, i was like yeah it sounds like fun to do this but like that that part about cutting stuff and doing all it's time consuming and like you're as you know i was like i already got like a ton of stuff going yeah. on like i don't know if i have the time to do it yeah. um i respect everyone that does it i mean i i, I was like uh a guest on like a buddy's show and like he cut the thing like so quick i was wow. like i was like i don't know if i could i, I could know if i could like it was like that day where he like put it on i was like oh i thought you were gonna oh, need like wow. a day or two and he was like oh no i was like jesus like i know i would like I'm also too like much of a perfectionist. Yeah. So I would probably be like, really, it would take me like, it'd be a year until our like our second episode. I think <laughs> if, I, if I if I was the one, if I was the one uh, doing it. But yeah, yeah, you've been on a couple times actually, both about yeah. uh, horror movies, which I thought was yeah great, and like it was a really fun environment. Like the thing I love about doing it, even though I like doing it with my friends, like it's cool meeting other people mm-hmm. who are doing it, where it's just Absolutely. like you're just connecting connecting on like Twitter and Instagram. It's like, yeah, hey, I like your show. Like, oh, hey, you seem like you like this. Like, do you want to be on our show? Like, it's totally it's really it's like it's it's an interesting thing because you're like these people are like they're kind of like friends now. Like, oh, you're yeah. like you talk to them almost every day. Like, oh, yeah, it's like, <laughs> like you don't crazy. you don't want to like, call each other like <laughs> colleagues. And yeah, friends is maybe a little bit funny because it's not like we know each other that well, you know, or like we no. hang out, but right, totally right. like we it's great. That's one of the great things about podcasting and being part of just sort of social film is yeah you get to meet cool people and like chat and every now and then do a podcast together or something and just like keep up on like what's going on and share thoughts and i love it it's great right yeah yeah, yeah. i think the hardest part, the hardest part i think is like matching up schedules uh, and i know like yeah. I, for some reason every cool guest that i've had or we've had on our show none of them are from the west coast like no one's in my time zone like at all yeah. everyone everyone is like oh like three hours ahead and you're like all right well i'll do whatever works out for you because i know yeah. it's later on your that's end so funny. Uh, that's so yeah. funny that's been the hard that's been the hardest part like trying to like yep. you know line up like the timing to do, totally. do a lot of this stuff i'm in la but not in like la la yeah um yep. so that part's nice um yeah the only, the only time i have to go to la la is like for work like every, every press mm-hmm. screenings in like burbank or somewhere really far yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. like, totally like an hour and a half away yeah i with, bet like, you've enjoyed <laughs> being able to do like remote like interviews with stars because i know you post a lot where you can just be yeah like, what looks like from home right that's probably nice and easy i i kind of thought in my head like even uh, even when COVID, like when it subsides and like things go back to like more normal i was like i think these celebrities are cool with just like not going to a <laughs> location and like getting all their hair and makeup done from their like hotel or their house and they're like they can crank a bunch of them out yeah and they don't have to go anywhere it's actually really good for us too because we can crank a lot of them out too by just like mm-hmm. sitting at home and yeah. like, doing it i mean i guess i mean i guess like the sucky part is like I guess you want to be in person with you. I would love to be in person with so and so. Right. But I think I I think I would take like the amount I get to do over mm-hmm. like being in person with them. Like I get to do a lot of them in a day. Yeah. And I don't think I could do that. I couldn't do that if it was like an in person thing because I I was told like that that schedule is like really hard and like really like, you know, if you think you're only like stressed about four or five minutes from your house, like they're like imagine like being on camera in a in a room with, yes. and trying not to be intimidated. Oh, totally. <laughs> like, you know, oh, yeah. Because I I used to before when I lived in New York. Um, at least in the early years, I used to work in like film publicity for Fox Searchlight and and different places. And yeah, like those junkets and everything. It's a whole production, as you know. So it's nice, actually. Yeah. I bet some days, at least, like you said, yeah. Of course, you might want to be yeah. there. But some days it's kind of nice to just be like, okay, I'm going to log on and I'm ready whenever you are. I'm hitting record. And it's it's cool, too, because you become friendly with like the companies that are organizing it, too. Like when you're like in you're like basically in like a waiting room on Zoom and all the people that are organizing it, they recognize you. They're like, oh, it's so good to see you again. Like you start to chat with them. too. It's it's like a nice little like it eases you up a bit before you go into like the actual uh, virtual room to talk to like whatever celebrity it is. And right. Yeah, it's nice. Like everyone's like super supportive and really cool and nice. I, I haven't had a bad one yet. Someone told me that someone told me that you might 
one, one yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sure, I'm like, you know, I just, <laughs> I don't know. And watching be someone I like love too. Like, oh, like, oh wow, they say never beat your heroes. <laughs> uh, I was very lucky and happy when, like, when I got Tom Holland. It was like eight o'clock in the morning. Wow, so I was one yeah. of his first. So I was like, and he was like, he complimented all my posters and I have them on my wall in yes. the background. Like, he was like, I was like, God, I'm glad I got you like at first thing in the morning and not like midday or at the end of the day right. when. Even so, even something that someone as charming and British as him probably is like gets annoyed <laughs> by, yeah. by the time he's like. I feel like it's inevitable, thing. right? <laughs> After you do ten of them, it's like, oh my god, like my, you know, like when you fake smile all day or like when you're just saying the same things. Yeah, I totally, totally understand. Yeah. but that is you're so like cool. getting I'd... you're getting like the same same questions yeah. over and over again. They're probably like, ugh, or we already did uh, this. <laughs> oh, totally. But that's cool. I love it. Yeah. Well, keep <laughs> keep up the great work. It's so awesome to see. But so Anybody? now, Gaius, let's leave that in modern times and let's rewind, okay? Let's rewind 30 years ago to October 1992, everyone. Ooh, October 16th, 1992 is when Candyman was released wide in the U.S. So before we get into why we like this movie, all the little details, I'm just going to tell Gaius and you all what uh, fun things in pop culture were happening at this time. I thought it was pretty fun to see. Okay. On the TV and music side, the kind of worlds colliding here. Uh, just earlier this month in 1992, October 3rd, was when Sinead O'Connor famously ripped up the picture of the Pope on SNL during her performance. I remember that. That's pretty cool. She gave us that nothing compares to you and then like yes. messed it all up. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, Sinead, I know. Oh, wow, what a moment. And also, oh, same, same day, same weekend, apparently, another badass female singer madonna had premiered her erotica video on mtv which of course you know put everyone in it's a own thing yeah in a tizzy in a that tizzy. was the whole thing <laughs> yes big big tizzy but with between sinead and madonna so that was going on yeah. end of the road the song end of the road by boys to men was number one for weeks and weeks and weeks from like late august even into november I think, people i think were like obsessed. 13 weeks i think it was yeah. like it was the longest i think it was like at the time was like the longest like number one on the hot 100 and then like and then they broke and i think they broke their own record later with like mariah carey and one sweet day yes i think uh, you're right six, yeah 16, 16 weeks at number one so but wow. also a time to be alive when like boys and men rule the right rule the chart <laughs> how cool i know it's so funny because end of the road is i feel like nowadays it's a little cheesy that i'm like that was really number one for that long but hey, it worked and everyone loved it. Yep, so yep. that was hugely popular. And then on the movie side, of course, Candyman came out. But before Candyman came to the box office, we had, and even during, we had Under Siege with Steven Seagal back when he was a star, <laughs> <laughs> right? We had The yeah, Last of the Mohicans. We had The Mighty wow. Ducks and Captain Ron with Kurt Russell, which I thought was fun. Those were all very popular movies at the time, a mix of action and comedy and all that. And here comes Candyman, which it's funny. Candyman I saw was never number one. It uh, opened at number four and it got to number three, but it never really made a massive splash. But right. it obviously made a massive splash culturally and in the horror genre because here was the birth of a new uh, slasher and a black slasher, which I'd love to hear your thoughts about at some point yeah, in this yeah. conversation. Because I know some people were worried and some people were totally cool with it. So yeah, here is a whole new, you know, in the in the in the Clive Barker vein of horror, because of course he already had three Hellraiser movies by this time, and Nightbreed had come out two yep. years prior. So in this fantasy, you know, violent horror uh, subgenre now is Candyman. So before I say more, I'm gonna throw it over to you, Gaius. Tell us in your own words, for anyone out there who is in the dark, what is Candyman about? <laughs> Candyman. Um it's a supernatural horror film starring T Tony Todd. Yeah. The best uh the best uh voice in horror. Oh yeah. <laughs> I would say totally. Mm -hmm. Um I was you know, for a long time I was under the impression that Clyde Barker directed this for so long. Right. And it's actually I he just like it's uh based on his like short story, The The Forbidden. Yeah. Um and it's uh Virginia Madsen plays like a Chicago uh graduate student. And she's mm -hmm. competing like a thesis on like urban legends and like folklore. And then that's how she kind of stumbles upon the whole like legend of uh, Candyman. Um, and then that becomes like uh, 
for those that don't know, the Candy Man is the ghost, like an African American who uh, it's killed uh, for like because he's like falls in love with like you know right uh, you know someone who's white and like they yeah there's this whole there's a there's a lot of like deeper things about race relations and then like uh, that oh yeah that I think that is like actually makes this movie better than like most uh, mm-hmm. horror movies like I'm you know I will uh, just to say this really quick like when I covered the new one uh mm. for our website um when i talked to vanessa williams who was in, mm-hmm. in this uh first one she also has a cameo in the new one yeah. we talked a lot about how like horror movies especially horror movies touch on these like deeper themes than like a lot of other genres do and then this yeah. one really really did and I don't, I don't know if like in 1992 like uh if people appreciated it as much right that's um, interesting. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know if they did, but I think like over time, like what this movie is about, and like all of its themes have become like a much bigger thing as like the movie kind of gained like yeah. popularity over the years. Have you ever heard of Candyman? If you look in the mirror, and you say his name five times. In cities everywhere. Candyman. They whisper his name. Right. Candyman. It's just a story. Candyman. Candyman. Just a ghost story. Candyman. <laughs> you know, it was like, I, I remember my mom actually, because my mom, horror movies were hit or miss with her. Sometimes she can, oh, yeah. sometimes, she, sometimes she can handle them, sometimes she can't. But I, I just remember this one just hit her so deeply, even though this is like a, you know, of course, it has all the elements that we love in horror movies. It can mm-hmm. be a little gory, it's a little violent, it's that, oh, it's yeah. scary. But like, it was one of the first horror movies like, that she, it, all, all of the, it's the story and the things of it actually hit her a lot deeper yeah. than like she even uh, they would. And yeah. she also wanted me to understand that as I was growing up watching it, that what it was about something much more than like, you know, being something that's just based on like a Clyde Barker, you know, story. Right. Like this is a, like, please pay attention to like, you know, what the movie's trying to say. Yeah. Um, it's one of those movies too. It's funny. Cause like, even though Clyde Barker didn't direct this, mm-hmm. um, I feel the same way about this movie that I do like Hellraiser where I, like, when I watch it, each time I watch it, I gain like a new mm-hmm. appreciation for it. Like, yep. it, like, and I, like, I, like I watched it again for this, like, uh, last week. And I, I think the last time I watched it was right before the new one came out. The new one, yeah. And mm-hmm. like, yeah, and like it, it is one of those like it doesn't happen with a lot of movies, but it's one of those horror movies I think that gets better with each viewing. I think I agree because I probably you know I first saw this movie I had always heard about it, but I actually saw the sequel, the first sequel, which Ooh. I believe was Kenny Man <laughs> Farewell to the Flesh. Farewell to the I, Flesh, yeah. right? I saw that one first. I actually had seen clips, of course of the original of this film, but um, I had never seen it in full until much later in life. I was in my 20s living in New York and my sister, I think, was living in New York at the same time because I remember we went to see a screening of it. Oh my gosh, it must have been, oh wow, like maybe 15 years ago. Maybe it was the 15th anniversary of the movie because Lincoln Center, film at Lincoln Center was showing it and so we saw it on the big screen. And whoa, like I knew it was scary. I knew it was bloody, you know, the hook man and everything. But whoa, I mean, it is disturbing. There are some, there's blood in this movie, but it's not, you know, and as someone who doesn't love gore, you know, obviously blood, it comes with the territory and I'm all for it. But I, you know, like how we were saying, like Hellraiser can get a little too gnarly for me. This is okay. Like I can handle it. I think many people out there can handle it, but it's just so shocking and so visceral um, that it, it definitely came at a good time because of course we know with the 80s we had the heyday of Freddy and Jason and Michael Myers and even Leatherface Chucky so we saw a lot of slashers but this slasher hit differently you know where yeah. not only like you and your mom were saying like that there are themes that hit us but just also the scares and the the sounds great sound effects i wrote in my notes amazing sound yeah. score and effects oh such a good movie like it's and even, I agree. It's even it the simple better. thing yeah, it's yeah. like the simple things too. Like, I mean, like, I don't think as a even as a thirty-seven year old man now, like, I don't really feel comfortable saying Candyman five times. From right? 
I, th- I think I'd still stop myself and like, no, it it might happen. Yes, <laughs> I don't want to. I love how I don't whenever poke the bear. someone <laughs> says it in this movie, they always stop at four. And the and the opening four. the opening is great with the the babysitter, of course. Yeah, she yeah. says even to her boyfriend, no one ever got past four. But when she then she says it the fifth time when Helen Virginia Madsen um says it you know it's always a delay before that fifth time and it's like yeah. it you know it is scary even still 30 years later it is creepy that silence between that fifth time yeah between each yeah yeah you're, you're right? like Ugh. we all know like ooh, it might he might not appear right away but he's coming for you you know yeah and it's it's yeah. one of those things too because you feel like you're in it with them yeah like you're watching when you're watching them say it's almost like uh someone told me this and i never really thought about it this way like when you watch the ring for the first time mm. and like and you, and you and you watch the video right you're watching mm. the video as like a viewer so yeah. it almost makes you feel like you also have like seven days until whatever's right. gonna happen happens and like that's kind of how you feel watching this where it's like you're sitting there and it's like oh, just yeah. don't say it again. if you say if you say yeah. it again like it might it might happen behind me dude yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't know like it's yeah. like it and that's a good thing for like a horror movie to do that to make you feel like you're like in it with them yeah uh, that's how i kind of feel and like you know like i said like i being 100 percent serious with you i don't i've never completed saying it i was i just like a wow it's just yeah. a thing it's just a it's just a just a thing i mean just yeah. in case you know yeah <laughs> well it's funny because we we have bloody mary and we have candy man two very similar um sort of like uh i don't even want to say urban legends because different stories but of extremely similar basically the same way to summon them but bloody mary is three right. times right in the mirror in the dark yeah. while candy yeah. man is five right so really just yeah. the number is the only thing that's different but i i love that you said that great point it feels like we are in the room with these characters and if they continue watching or continue saying it, we, the viewer, is in trouble. Yeah, which, something yeah. Happen to us, yeah. Right? Yeah. And how funny that you bring up yeah. the ring, because that also has a milestone anniversary uh, tomorrow. Yeah, because oh, Candyman, wow. as, of, as of this recording, Candyman's anniversary was yesterday. I know what you did last summer, the other hook man uh came out on this day and then the ring came out 20 years ago tomorrow so what a amazing trifecta of like sort of urban legendy scary stories right yeah so good all three what a what a trio but so now before we get into our reminded me about that oh yeah no worries yeah (laughs) totally i was like i was like i'm like like looking at my notes like i got a post about the ring yeah (laughs) and then now now we're gonna now we're gonna be like trying to beat each other to the post (laughs) i have to to post before gaius does yeah oh yeah that's hey release date rewind that's what i'm here for right thanks so much for watching Next week will be part two of this discussion. And in the meantime, please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram.